Hey guys, this is Kyle at Projection Hub, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a business plan for a convenience store, or a pharmacy, or a corner market, or a grocery store, or, or whatever your specific convenience store is going to be. Now, I will clarify, this is probably less for like a gas station. That is a separate thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to write a business plan uh, for your convenience store. Now, I'm going to be using this example business plan. This is a free template. You can grab it down in the description of the video below. No strings attached. Again, pre-fill it out with a fictitious example. And I'm gonna be going through the structure of this. And the main goal of this video is I'm gonna highlight five key points that I think will make or break the, the effectiveness of your business plan. Now, who is Projection Hub? We've helped more than 50,000 uh, small businesses, entrepreneurs, startups create financial projections for their business businesses, which are a big component of business plans. And me personally, as I mentioned, my name is Kyle. And before my time with Projection Hub, I was actually an SBA lender uh, for about seven years. And so that consisted of compiling loan applications, reviewing business plans, and just helping businesses prepare for that process. And so that's kind of the perspective I'm gonna be coming from is how to gear your business plan to be as successful as possible when it comes to trying to secure financing. Because that's kind of the greatest scrutiny your business plan can go through. Is when a lender or someone's considering giving you money is going through that. And so if at any point this video has been helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps us as a small business too. Or leave a comment and, and say, you know, what portion of the video you really appreciate it, or even ask questions if you have any down in the comments. You can subscribe to the channel. Not all of our content is about convenience stores, just about running, starting, growing businesses in general. Um, I think you'll find that to be valuable. So without further ado, we will go ahead and jump in. So why is your business plan important? Now, I don't want this to sound cliche, but the goal of your business plan is not to educate whoever is reading it on you know, what a convenience store is, or even the market, or even the industry. The goal of your business plan is to demonstrate your specific plan that you're gonna follow to be successful. Now, maybe that sounds obvious, but a lot of people spend too much time you know, talking about the industry and their business plan versus their understanding of maybe their market and exactly what they're gonna do. And if they follow that plan, that's why they think that they're gonna be successful to increase the confidence of the lender that they see like, yeah, they, they've got it figured out for the next few years and that's gonna be a safe you know, investment for them to make. And so, we are gonna go ahead and start to go through this and I will give some commentary along the way. So right off the bat, we've got the table of contents. You can kind of see what's included in here and the flow we're gonna go through. And something you probably notice is only 17 total pages. And half of that is basically the financial projections. And so a myth that a lot of people believe is that your business plan needs to be long to be good or it needs to have a lot of words in there. It needs to be a really elaborate story. And I think the opposite is actually true. When I was a lender, the last thing we wanted to do was read a really long business plan. And we wouldn't read the whole business plan. We would skim it. We, could, we would jump around and try to pull out the things we could in the time that we had to understand what was happening in there. And so the longer you make your business plan, the more at risk you are for the lender or whoever is reading it to miss the important details. And so if you need to write a really long business plan to just for yourself as an exercise, to feel like you understand and have thought of everything and have all your ideas down on paper, maybe that's your master plan, do that but then have a refined version that, you know, is 15 pages, 20 pages that you can get to someone, you know, like a lender that's gonna be reviewing that. And so that's my recommendation there right off the bat. First up, we've got our executive summary. I want you to think about this like a cover letter to a resume for a job application. This is kind of your chance, maybe in one page, to give the highlights of what the business plan contains. Some people like to include some financial highlights in here, whether that's like startup costs, how much funding you need, maybe when you plan to break even. You don't have to include that in here, but I have seen that many times before. So it's just something to consider. So this is gonna be your quick, like who we are, where we're doing it, what are we doing, some goals, you know, you can keep that in here. Your company description is actually just kind of gonna be like an extension of that. So here you can see it kind of shifts more towards like history, legal structure, your unique selling proposition. You know, you can include that in here, but like, don't feel a whole lot of pressure here. Like if you have see, like a secret sauce that you think is a big deal and really sets you apart. So like this could be maybe for instance, where you're gonna be located, there's no pharmacy for 25 miles and you're gonna bring a pharmacy to this town. That's a big thing, you should include that. If you don't have something that really sets you apart, then you don't have to necessarily have a unique selling proposition and, and that's okay. Just, I wouldn't say put something, you know, it's always the customer service one that I think can be a little bit generic. And I think that's funny because I think that's what this example <laughs> says in here. Anyways, company description, kind of an extension of the executive summary. All right, the market analysis. Now we're kind of getting into the meat of it. And the market analysis is where we want to demonstrate that there's actually room in the market to support our convenience store. 
And, you know, here is going to be their chance to talk about when we say industry overview, don't do the shark tank approach where you say this industry is hundreds of billions of dollars a year, because that does not apply to what we're doing. We want to talk about the local market because that's what's going to impact the success of our business. You want to understand every potential competitor that you have, both physical, maybe even in digital, right? So maybe if that's a, there's a Kroger, which is a popular grocery store where I'm located, maybe they offer delivery, right? And so maybe that impedes upon the area you're trying to support. So just talk about your competitors, understand your competitors, understand the reviews of your competitors. Are people disgruntled, disgruntled or not satisfied with the options that already exist? And just kind of understand that opportunity. And the key point, the first key point is gonna be, we need to demonstrate some specific examples of like local research that there's actually room in the market for your business. Now ways to do this, so obviously you could order like an elaborate market study and you could pay for that. And there are whole agencies that do that. We offer a market research report and a foot traffic report for a lower cost. You can take advantage of those if you want. There are also some free ways to do this that can really improve your business plan. I'm gonna demonstrate one way to do that here in this video. And so we include some examples in the template here. Here you can see like, oh, do an analysis. So even here, I would say like, understand the reviews, do all the things I already mentioned, understand reviews, how many, make a list of all the ones in your area and just try to do as much detective work as you can personally. And, you know, talk about that in your business plan in a, in a succinct way. I really like, so this is one, depending upon how technical you want to get, one way you can do this is, you know, how many convenience stores are within a 10 mile radius? There's an estimate, there's some data out there that says people typically want to travel less than three miles for a convenience store. So then you can say, okay, here's the location I'm thinking about. I go three miles out from that. Is there anyone else's convenience store that their three mile radius would touch that? And you can start to try to figure out like, yes, there is room to support my location. If you don't have access or know where to find that information, that's okay. The example I'm gonna show you here is a free, simple thing you can do. And so we're gonna to go to what's called the Google Keyword Planning Tool. So you can create a free Google Ads account, come to this keyword planner. And what I'm doing is I wanna see how often are people searching for these keywords? How often do they go to Google or Google Maps and they're searching for that? Now I have the location set to Indianapolis because that's where, you know, that's the city where I'm gonna be located. You, could, you probably wanna get even more closer to that, like a, like a suburb or something like that around. So like Indianapolis is a pretty big city still. And so this is probably gonna be a little bit more vague than we need, but for example sake, we're gonna use it. And so here we can see how often people are searching. So this is gonna do a few things. I gave it four examples and it gave me a bunch of keyworded ideas that are related. So that's helpful to know. It's telling me on average, how often are people searching for that per month? And then the most important thing this tool does is it shows me some trend data. And so I checked a few of the ones that I thought were important, right? So I've got grocery store, pharmacy, convenience store, Asian market, and Mexican grocery store near me. And so I checked these because you can see on a year over year, they've grown, those search volumes have grown by 23%. Almost all of them have grown by that amount. And so that shows me that in the place I'm searching, there is a growing need or interest in those. Now, think about it this way. If somebody already knew they had a convenience store that they go to frequently, they're not going to search grocery store near me, right? They're not looking for a new grocery store. If they already have a grocery store, they like to go to. It could be visitors searching that. It could be people who just moved to the area. So seeing growth in that means there's an increased amount in people who don't know what convenience stores or they're looking for a new place to shop. So that's an indication to me there's room in the market. You can also see competition. This competition number is for Google advertising. So this isn't necessarily saying that like there's no competition and there's not any competitors, but that that's kind of what it's trying to say. There's at least low competitors. There's not people bidding for these keyword phrases, which typically in a highly competitive industry, you got people who are fighting over showing up first for those keyword results. And so when you see low, that typically means it's not super competitive. But again, that, that differs from industry to industry. So as a quick check, doing something like this to me is a good indication like, okay, there's at least a growing demand for convenience stores in my market. Include this research in your business plan, okay? It at least demonstrates that you're thinking about it. You can do more than that if you'd like. This is just a free example to something you can do. Okay, back to the business plan. So we're gonna keep moving along here. So our marketing and sales strategy, which this will bring us to key point number two. Before I get to that, just want to highlight what's in this section. You'll see nothing super surprising here. You know, what is your convenience store going to offer? Ours is Easy Mart, and we're offering a range of products, including groceries, snacks, beverages, personal care items, and more. And so our pricing strategy, sales strategy, 
distribution, you know, it's brick and mortar, so people are gonna come in, maybe you have a drive-through, and then, you know, this section is gonna say like, we're gonna have a website, we're going to, maybe you offer a delivery through a third-party app, we're gonna do some advertising, whatever. You should include that in here. That's all a minimum requirement. So that's not key, the key point. What you see in here is the minimum of what you should have. Key point number two is to make this section kind of a go, go above and beyond, is any way we can demonstrate customer acquisition. So we just spent the last section demonstrating there is a market. Now we wanna do our best to demonstrate this is how we're actually gonna get them. And just saying, we're gonna have a website and we're gonna do some advertising, that works. I mean, that is technically customer acquisition, but it's not really a tangible example to give someone even more confidence that's true. Now for a convenience store, it might be a little difficult. So like another word for this is called traction, which is common in like the tech space. And the best example of traction is anytime you can get sales or users before your official launch, that is a really good demonstration that like people are interested, people are gonna use it, people are gonna pay for it. Um, the next best version of traction, if you can't get customers early, which is kind of hard for a convenience store to like sell to people before your store is actually open, the next best is lists of interested people so that when the day comes and you open up, you have your grand opening, someone actually shows up. What we want to avoid in this section of our business plan is the assumption that if we build it, people will come. And so let's look at some of the examples here. So we've got to organize a grand opening event, offering discounts and free giveaways. That's a good idea. Collaborate with local businesses and organizations to offer special discounts. It's another good idea. I like example three the most in this case because this is pre-launch. So both of these two require you kind of taking the leap to open it and then start doing that work. I like number three because you can do this before you even open your store. People don't like to do traction because a lot of times it's uncomfortable. You know, it's requires you to hustle and to do extra work outside of just running a convenience store. But example number three, compile a list of local residents that would like to have a new convenience store in the area so you can keep them updated and excited for the grand opening. So that's maybe if you're local to the area, that's friends, family, friends of friends, neighbors, you know, start collecting an interest of just even people saying like, hey, if I was to open up a convenience store or whatever your type of store is going to be, you know, would that be interesting to you? Would you shop there? Is that something that would be helpful to you? And just start collecting, you know, if you can put in your business plan, you know, I have a thousand people from local residents that have said that they would love to have a new convenience store if we opened it. That is a really good indicator to a lender, not only because they like to see that people are interested, but that you actually went through the effort to do that. I think that says a lot about the owner. Okay, moving along, operations and management. So here you're gonna talk a little bit more about like the logistics of actually, you know, your plan to run the store. Very important, you know, it's, this probably won't make or break it. Or, I mean, it probably won't make your business plan, but it could certainly break it if you don't include some good information here. But key point number three that I wanna highlight is relevant industry experience. And so you wanna make sure that you share why you're qualified to, to do this, to be successful in this business. And you know, if that's, you've ran a, you've owned a grocery store or a convenience store before, or you've managed one or, you know, some sort of related experience that you can apply to this, that's gonna increase the likelihood that you're gonna be successful because you know what you're doing and you know what you're getting yourself into. That just kind of eases the fears, concerns, and questions from a potential lender. If you don't have relevant experience, that just creates a few more hurdles of you now, now have to do the job of instilling confidence that you actually know what you're doing and getting yourself into. And so if you don't have super applicable experience on your own, do you have a partner that does and that you can lean on that? So just be sure to highlight your team, your ownership, and what um, relevant experience you have. All right, moving along to financial projections. This is kind of the big one, the big section. Now, obviously we're a little biased because this is our specialty. But even when I was a lender, the most important part of the business plan was the projections. We would read the business plan, we would skim it, and then we would spend a lot of time looking at or personal financial statements and details and the financial projections. We're not focused on personal financial stuff today. We're just focusing on the business plan portion. And so we'll show you here, we've got our startup costs. So what's it gonna cost us actually to open up? You know, you could probably, it would help to demonstrate exactly what you wanna buy, like line item <clears throat> or at least categories how much money you're gonna need, where you plan to get that money. So here we're seeing an SBA loan of $150,000. Revenue projections, is just is like a high level of five years of financial data, including some convenience store specific data, like how many stores we'll have, transactions per day, average transaction value. We've got some key metrics here, like gross profit. We've got a breakdown of our operating expenses, so like our overhead, this could be like rent, those things you're gonna be paying for every month. 
And then we've got a five year pro forma. Most lenders probably aren't gonna require five years projections. Most will probably require three years at least. So five years is just conservative. We've got a proposed income statement, a pro forma income statement. We've got cash flows and we've got a balance sheet and a break even here. Now a quick plug, all of those projections were created using this template. I will link this down in the description below. And if you stay at the end of the video, I'll even give you a discount code if you wanna grab this. If you're not an accountant or know an accountant, having doing a template yourself, like filling out a template is probably the easiest, fastest way to create reliable projections. It's gonna be the cheapest way to do it as well. You can see in this template, now don't stick with me, don't get overwhelmed. You're only gonna be editing and changing things in the blue boxes. So we're talking about fixed assets. We're talking about, we're putting in proposed loans and you can say a lot of this is future, right? We're not getting these loans until later because maybe we plan to open up later locations. This template will help us calculate, do we have enough cash? Will we need more? We'll see here some specific revenue calculations. Now, again, we're only editing the blue boxes here. What stores are we having? When are they gonna open? How many customers do we plan to come through? What are we selling category-wise at these stores? Right, so all these other white numbers are just calculations that are happening. They're not actually inputs. I already showed you, we're gonna, we're gonna put in our monthly expenses. We're gonna account for any salaried positions. So if you have managers, if you have salaried staff, you can put owner's draws. And then this template is gonna, it's gonna calculate all those things that I, it's gonna automatically generate all those things I just put or showed you in the business plan. So you'll get all these. And any changes you make on your inputs, these will all automatically change. Monthly breakdowns, annual breakdowns. So I will link, I'll put a link to that down in the description below. But financial projections are not key point number four. Again, financial projections are a minimum requirement. You have to have them if you want your business plan, you know, to be ready for a lender review. Key point number four is making sure that they are realistic and within industry norms or, you know, expectations. Now, if you have a lot of experience, you might just know those norms and it's easy for you to make your projections within that range. But if you don't, something you can do really simple here. We'll go back. I like to use this at a glance tab is I've got some key numbers here, right? I've got key ratios. I've got a lot of important data here. Just Google these, you know, what is typical gross profit for a convenience store or whatever your type of convenience store is. Also, depending on your comfort level, if you like to use tools like ChatGPT, you can also ask that. And let me just show you, I've got one pulled up here. I just asked ChatGPT, what are some typical averages and benchmarks for a convenience store like gross profit? Just see what it would say. And you know, it's gonna give some, we're not gonna have fuel sales, so right, we don't have to account for that, but 30, 30 to 60% is gonna be a gross profit. Let's go back here and look. We're right at 60%, so we're on the high end of that range. We're not outside of that range, but we're on the high end of that range. And net income, I think I'd asked without field on here, so three to 5%, we're not gonna have gas. We're at 1%, 14%, 17%. So another quick thing to note is, it's okay if your projections in like year four, five, like when you start getting further out, become like less conservative. Because again, it's okay to be optimistic. It's more important for the near term years to be conservative, right? We, don't, we would never wanna say in year one, we're gonna have a 30% profit because we haven't even proven we've made a dollar yet, right? So it's better to prove that the numbers still work even whenever it's being really conservative. So that's a good range to be right there. So that's a demonstration of that exercise is just use use Google, use a chat GPT, use any other tool you can find to just compare some averages to your numbers. And that's key point number four, you want your projections to be realistic and within industry norms. Okay, and that's gonna bring us pretty much to the end of the business plan, but you'll notice we're still missing a key point. And so this key point is less, this is not necessarily something that needs to be written in your business plan, but it is something you need to be prepared for, especially if you're trying to get financing. And that is called skin in the game. And so I'll use an example of, if you're gonna buy a house, you're gonna to go to the bank and say, I would like $300,000 for a house. And they will say, okay, great. You know, you're gonna have a down payment of 10%, right? So you give that $30,000 to, towards the loan, it reduces it, et cetera. If you de default on that mortgage, you're gonna lose your deposit, your down payment. And you're also gonna lose the house, right? Because the lender is gonna have a lien on that. Now that's a bleak picture that I'm not trying to scare anybody. But the same is true for, for business, right? If you say, I need a $100,000 business loan, the bank or the lender isn't just gonna say, great, here's $100,000, like have fun. They're going to say, okay, we'll put in 80,000. We would like to see you invest 20,000, right? You can come up with that however you need to. 
And then they're also going to want to see that loan be collateralized or secured if you can, right? So a convenience store, unless you own the building or buy the building, you're probably not going to have a ton of collateral. Your inventory is not going to count for a lot, especially because a lot of it's going to be perishable. And so you might need to have a personal asset. If that's a home, if that's a free and clear car, something that's probably pretty uncomfortable, the lender might want to require you use that to secure the loan. So a lot of times when I was a lender, people would come to me and say that they received the advice to keep personal and business separate. That's great advice when it comes to bank accounts, bookkeeping. It's unrealistic advice when it comes to getting a loan or financing. So I'm not telling you again that you have to give all that away in a business plan. Just don't be surprised when that question comes up and be prepared to know what you're willing to offer when it comes to that. So that's the end of the, our video here. Again, I've linked this business plan down in the description below. I've linked to the projection template. Again, we have a video that walks you through how to fill out the whole pro projection template. And you can use PH20 BP to get a 20% discount on that template. And we've got market research reports available. All that's linked down in the description below. But at the very least, hope you'll grab this free template. Like the video if it was helpful to you. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks.